Hello, welcome to the Rugby League launch hour here at loverugbyleague.com with me, James Gordon. I'm joined by Drew Derbyshire. It's World Mental Health Awareness Day. State of Mind. We've got loads of these State of Mind tops in the office. If you want to buy one and donate to State of Mind, it's stateofmindsport.org. Um, there's a few different options you can pick on there. There's the black classic t-shirt or the grey t-shirt um, that I'm wearing at the moment. So please do support State of Mind um, and get on there now, stateofmindsport.org. I'll get Lucy to chuck a link in the comments on this video. We're going to talk and preview the Super League Grand Final. We're going to talk all of this week's Rugby League news. Um, thanks as always to Betfred for their, not William Hill, Betfred, thank you to Betfred, we'll talk a bit more about the uh, William Hill scandal later on, thanks for their continued support, please do join in the debate, add your comments, leave us your messages, let us know what you want to talk about, um, what should we do, what do you want to do first Drew, should we run through some news, I know you've been busy, go for it, there's a lot of international there's, news at the moment isn't there, there's, um, it's the Nines World Cup, yeah. Next weekend. Yeah. Um, Paramount is, is it televised? Yeah, they're on Sky. So we've, uh, it's not been it's, it's not been like officially announced. It's just uh, pops up on so the schedule. On Sky, right? okay. um, so they're on Sky. We'll be able to watch. Obviously, the big news is is probably Blake Austin coming into the England side, uh, which has been announced this morning. It wasn't originally down to feature for. England in the Nines tournament because uh, he was struggling with injuries, wasn't it, towards the end of uh, the season with Warrington. Uh, but he's, he's been drafted in, replaced Warrington teammate Jack Hughes in the side, who's got a groin injury. Um, but Hughes is hoping to, to be fit enough for the, the Great Britain Lions tour of the so Southern Hemisphere. Is it a bit of a, do you think it's a bit of a prove his fitness type exercise, maybe? Possibly, and, it, and it'll possibly be just to, to integrate him with the English lads um, mm. and get him into the setup. Uh, under Wayne Bennett as well. Get working Canada. on his accent, stuff like that, is that what you mean? Maybe. Well, you've got a very thick Warrington accent, haven't you, James? Well, you all uh, want to talk about thick accents. So, uh, you might have to give him some lessons on a, on a Warrington accent. Just looking through some of these teams, so Samoa, uh, go on loverbully.com, all the squads for the different <laughs> nations are on there. Samoa have got mainly an RL place, Joey Lee Lou is in there, uh, but Liggy Sau, who's signing for Hull for next season, He's in there. Um, we were talking about France because the France team looks fairly weak. Mm. We were saying it's missing Escaray, Farge isn't in it. Now, I thought Farge was... No Mark Rella for Toulouse. No Mark Rella. I thought Farge wasn't in it because he's in the grand final, but then Kevin Nagama is going to captain Fiji, and obviously he's playing in the grand final exactly. this week. So, um, so is and, and I noticed Willis announced their nine squad yesterday. No Ben Flower, no Gil Dudson... Uh, he's Ben Flower sort of play, you want to play just, nine? Chester Butler. Well, he, he's one of the better forwards, isn't he? So um, you, you probably assume you'd, you'd want to, um, to play Flower. An Anthony Gellin's in the Cook Islands uh, line up. Um, a bit of a bit of fuss over someone who isn't in the Cook Islands line up. A Love Rugby League favourite. He is. Um, Chance Nickel Clockstam. Yeah. Uh, the Canberra Raiders full back. It's, it's a mouthful, but uh, he's, he's been electric in the. NRL for Canberra Raiders this year. It's not his debut season in the NRL because he played a couple of games uh, for New Zealand Warriors previously, but he's, he's really uh, broken through uh, this year. The interesting thing is he's, he's represented the Cook Islands four times previously, um, and in, he was meant to be representing the Cook Islands in the, the World Cup Nines this autumn, but a couple of weeks ago he came out and said that he'll be down at the back West Stadium supporting his uh, international teammates, but he won't be playing because uh, it's been a grueling season for himself and he wants his, his body to have a, a good rest over the off-season. But this morning, the New Zealand uh, squad were announced for their autumn internationals and uh, Charles Nicol Klockstad was, uh, was involved and was named in the Kiwi side. Um, so it's it, that's an interesting one in itself because well. he, he wanted he wanted an off season, uh, but now he's been called up to the New Zealand side. Uh, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see if he plays or not then, um, or he might request to have the uh, the games off. But I think because the Kiwis have come calling, he, he might play. So there's been a lot of announcements. We seem to be getting press releases day in day out at the moment. Great Britain and England seem to announce a squad every other day, and we're not quite sure where they're up to. Um, which is a bit of an odd one, but yeah, go out and sign and check all that. 
Let's uh, let's talk last weekend. Um, let's talk specifically about Toronto and um, Toronto beat Featherstone twenty four six in Championship Grand Final last week. Um, a record crowd for Toronto um, in at the Lamport Stadium nine thousand was it nine thousand nine hundred and seventy four yeah. something like that. Um, Obviously, Toronto by far the best team in the championship. Deserved to be promoted. Obviously, got accepted into Super League. Um, your thoughts on that, Drew? They deserve to be prom uh, promoted, didn't they? They've been the, been the best side all year. It was always going to be an uphill battle for, for Featherstone. I, I read a piece, I think it was with Gareth, Gareth uh, Walker in the mirror, where um, the, the players were, were working throughout the week. Uh, I think they, and the, then they flew over on Thursday. They played on the Saturday, and you'll still be jet lagged, wouldn't you? Let, let's face it, the players had, had been knackered still. Um, but they played. The only they, were, they went down with with pride. Oh yeah, some, I mean, like, they were winning, winning six four yeah. at half time. Um, they went down with pride, uh, but I think it, it was only right for for Toronto uh, to be promoted. They, they were they weren't hard done to last year, but so. They, they kind of deserve to go up as well last year, uh, only to fall uh, at the final level to, to London. It's, I, I'm just looking forward to, to Super League in 2020 and seeing how everything operates in Super League and how the teams operate But while going over the weather. The, the Super League teams, the bigger Super League teams especially, uh, like going over there because obviously the, some teams in the past have had to say, stay in student accommodation and stuff like that over in uh, uh, Canada. So it's going to be interesting just to see on the field, uh, action with the wolf pack and see how they, how they get on, but also uh, if it's if it's looking like they could be a, a viable uh, club in the future. So a few a few things off the back of that, and uh, you know, there's been a few stories on the site. They're hoping to keep ninety percent of the squad from this season. So you, I find that hard to believe. Do you think? In, in my opinion, I'm, I mean, obviously Sims I, is going, and you know, you'd imagine some of the squad players. Yeah, have got, I think Ross is going okay. I think ninety percent is a is a bit. High, um, because that would that only mean a couple of players out and a couple of players in. I think they've I've, got to be bringing players in at the high. Yeah. They've got to be bringing in players that are better than anyone they've got. I mean, I, the I, only, the only, the only signings Toronto need to make are three, three maybe four players yeah. that go in at the yeah. very top of their squad. Yeah. Uh, if you if you if you thinking about the squad now, Gareth, Gareth O'Brien's a Super League player. Ricky Latelli. Uh, he, he should light up Super League as he has done in the, in the Championship. I mean, the today. backs, to be fair, St I mean, Stanley, I think he should pass more, but Stanley I, I like, can play I like, Super League. I like to see Liam Kane Super League. Yeah. I, I think he only he had played one, for season, Wakefield, one yeah. season, didn't he, with Wakefield? Or, or was it Lee? No, he was at Lee, he was at Wakefield. He, so, he'd already signed for Toronto. Anyway. Exactly, so, so he's, only, he's only had one season in Russell Super League. Russell as well. So, I mean, that back line, you're all right with that. You know, with that, The bottom five, yeah. But with them, the back five of O'Brien, Russell, Latelli, Stanley and Kay, I think we Get away with that. Um, let's not forget, Josh McCroll's played almost 150 games in the NRL. Yeah. And Mellor, um, Mellor's probably played, must have played 200 Super League games. Exactly. So, so, so it's, uh, it, let's face it, it's got plenty of Super League experience in anyway, but I think... You just think, need some I think, superstars. I think, I think they'd, they'd want to, to maybe push for, for a spot in the, in the top eight. Do you think they'll make any sort of headline signs? Do you think they'll get like a, a Sunny Bill? Or? There's, talk, there's talk of Sunny Bill Williams, isn't there, but... They'd have to throw a lot of money at Sonny Bill Williams to, to, to get him to, to play. Uh, because if you think about it, it's an unsettled lifestyle playing for Toronto because you're over you're over in the, the UK for a couple of months, then you're over in Canada for a couple of months. Obviously, Sonny Bill's got uh, a young family as well. Um, so it's, it, it all depends on, on whether he gets yeah, with his family it, it, if they want to do it. Yeah, because if you're moving from overseas... You know, it's not like if you're English, okay, your family live in England, yeah. so you, you just go to t Toronto for a few months. Point, Whereas point if you're coming from, if you're relocating from New Zealand, it's like, well, do you move yeah. to Canada or do you move to England? Yeah. And, you know. Um, the, the idea, if you're if you're a player looking for a club, the the ideal player for for a Toronto would be if you was maybe early to mid twenties and you were single, mm. because everything's on on your own accord then, uh, and you can do everything uh, freely but obviously it makes it a little bit more difficult when you've got a family um, obviously um, maybe a wife uh, so, a couple of young kids as well it makes it all difficult with the travel arrangements cause, because where do they stay because it's mm. I'm led to believe is it kind of like in dorms in a, in a, in a Canada I, where yeah, the players well, are staying I'm not yeah well I mean presumably I mean there's, there's been a lot of talk about this because obviously Toronto pay the accommodation for the players and 
over there and over here and stuff and there's always a bit of talk about well where does that sort of stand as a salary cap benefit and I know there's a bit of controversy over that um, but yeah it's not conducive to family life I suppose like Aston Sims a good example of he yeah. his family lives still in Warrington you know while he's been playing over there um, we understand that they're going to play games in blocks again um, prob probably four four away four home that's what we're sort of being led to believe they won't play at home until at least the end of April so that what's end of April maybe round 11 or 12 um, so it looks like they're going to play some home games on the road I think we were talking about this last week it would make sense if the loop fixtures their home loop fixtures which is what three games mm. three four games would be played on the road because then every other Super League team has to go there once yeah. That would make it fair, wouldn't it? Because, you know, if, say, I don't know, say, Castleford have got to go to Toronto twice, that's obviously unfair if a team doesn't have to go at all. Um, there's also the, the point that some teams might have Catalan away twice and Toronto away twice, which uh, it, it poses some interesting uh, dilemmas yeah. there. I think we're trying to get over next year, aren't we, Jim? We'll, we'll try and go, yeah, we'll raid the piggy bank. Hopefully, um, hopefully a, a, a game in, in Dublin as well, or Barcelona, what, what we can go to. Well, well, I mean, there's been talk about them playing in European cities, isn't there? But uh, I understand that, well, certainly from the people I spoke to, they, they're just talking about playing them in the UK. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it'd be good if, if they do manage to take, a, I don't know, Toronto, Wigan to somewhere else so i mean i've not quite worked out who, who they would be playing so if they are count as position 12 so they'll play first third fifth seventh ninth eleventh in the loop yeah so obviously they'll play three of those six teams at home potentially could be st Helens. you could play toronto st Helens could be their season opener at wherever have you stadium wherever so that, that's a potential option <laughs> so we've got a couple of comments uh, louis banks says state of mind quality charity loved uh, the talk they did at culture of the eagles a few years back pete collier also says hello lads hello pete uh, glenn rickson i hate that toronto won't be playing at home in the beginning of the year it's difficult because it's just impossible for them to play the climate you know you, you could arrange games but they'd all get postponed um, there is a bit. There was talk about them having a dome or something, isn't there? Over they 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 put a dome over it yeah. last winter to rebuild it. Um, you know, whether it, it probably wouldn't be suitable for fans, would it? No, I mean, well, well, I mean, well, I mean, obviously they play over sports, don't they? But uh, you know, over that time, I mean, ultimately the stadium as it is now, you couldn't put a roof mm -hmm. on it. But you know, maybe long term, the only way Toronto could do it is if they they do that. But I suppose it is a little bit awkward, but. The thing with the quirk, the loop fixtures, is you can sort of get away with it, can't you? Because if you play them three home loop fixtures on the road, you know, say if you chuck in five or six away games, you're going to get to round nine or ten without having to play in mm. in, in Canada. Um, it is uh, there's missed the argument that it's a little bit unfair if they preload the away games because then they're sort of on the run at the back end of the season. They can build up momentum, can't they? Playing at home, which is sort of they didn't do that this season, but they played. They didn't play away from Canada. The last away game was like August the 4th. Now, obviously, they were always going to steamroll the championship anyway. But it would be interesting if in Super League, say their last away game was in August and then they play four home games and then they go into the playoffs off the back of four home wins. They've got a lot of momentum to take into the playoffs as opposed to, say, yeah. you know, well, anybody else. A few more comments. Lee Hall says, It's great for the game that Toronto win in Super League, just a shame about the weather uh, affecting the beginning of the season. People will try and bury them for it, uh, but they can't control the weather. Glenn also adds, and it, <laughs> if it has uh, something to do with the weather, then they are not real men. <laughs> and uh, Leo's reply saying, it is the snow season, it's unplayable. Um, yeah, it's, it's just one of them things. I'd I, I just like to see Toronto in Super League for a couple of seasons, just to see if if the club can be steady for the future. Well, I mean, because we've got to find this out. They've the, been in the pyramid now yeah, for a couple yeah. of years. Obviously, there's only so far they can take it when it's in League One uh, and in the Championship. Uh, it's, so gonna it's going to be interesting to see. see. It's going to be interesting to see how it changes, You know whether it means Super League gets more coverage or more sponsors or whatever, now that Toronto are in it, um, and whether, you know, whether the competition can leverage that to generate more funds and... Um, that's the million dollar question almost but I almost think you, you're almost putting too much pressure on Toronto because it shouldn't really be up to just one club to bring all that it, yeah. it should be part of a, 
of a, of a wider plan. Gwen, uh, Gwen says, real men play in the snow. Tip for you though, Gwen, never eat yellow snow. Never eat yellow, yellow snow. Um, there was a, Brian McDermott caused a bit of controversy with his comments in the post-match where he said that yeah. rugby league shouldn't be in small northern towns, or super league shouldn't be in small northern towns, it should be in, in big cities. And um, I, I thought they were poor comments. Um, I think, I think can... the problem is, I'll just say this, but I think the problem you've got is, yeah, of course it would be better if, well, in theoretically, yeah, it would be better if London were playing Barcelona or Toronto were playing Paris. But the reality of the situation is that unless Brian McDermott happens to know 10 billionaires who want to go and put teams in them places, it's not going to happen. And ultimately, these small northern towns, they're the ones producing all the players. You know, you look at look at Toronto's team, how many of them players come from small northern towns? And without those players, it's like, well, where would you be? Um, so I thought, you know, I understand that he was making the point that you need the big city teams, but I think it's very poor to alienate what the game is about because yeah. don't forget it's not it's not happy it's, rugby league isn't a northern based sport by accident the, the whole per, the whole reason behind rugby league was that the northern clubs broke away to turn professional so you can't sort of you can't reinvent the wheel that's the reality of the situation they broke away to create a sport so you, you're never going to get away from the fact that that's the the backbone of the sport because that's the whole reason it exists it wouldn't exist otherwise mm. uh, i understand what you're saying and i think they, they kind of maybe came out wrong his, his quotes a little bit um and i think he just said them in the wrong way i think he was just trying to explain that toronto are, are trying to that they're not trying to stamp on anyone's toes in effect they're, they're trying to create their own identity and they're trying to get, grow the game i think um we did a little piece on it yesterday on Wednesday I think it was um, that a, a young Canadian fan received a pair of boots from Andy Akers the, the Toronto player and he was he was in tears when, when he realised that there was Andy Akers in boots uh, and I think I'm surprised that, that Akers isn't home sick that, I mean that, Canada's that, a lot further than London uh, that's uh, that's uh, no, but that's fantastic to see though because without Toronto Wolfpack a Canadian fan wouldn't be watching rugby league but I think, I think that's the thing it's like one club isn't gonna, you know, Toronto. Be, Toronto could exist for ten years, and no other cities come along because it's dependent on other money men putting clubs there. Uh, you know, and David Argyle must have spent an absolute fortune already. Um, and I just sort of think, yeah, just get on with it. You know, don't you don't need to be coming out with stuff like that. Yeah, great if someone wants to shove a team in Montreal or New York or wherever, then fine. But let's not let's not get away from the fact that. If these small northern towns didn't exist, Toronto would have no one to play. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Um, I mean, I agree with the point that... I agree with the thinking that, you know, it is a bit odd having Toronto in a league with Castleford yeah. and Wakefield and whoever else. Um, and and there, is, there is always mixed messages with rugby league. It's like, they need to decide, well, do you want to be this big city franchise type league or do you want to just be a... A conventional league, and and you know, obviously we had licensing, we had, we had licensing and, and all that, and but for me, I just want to see the. Be I don't really care where teams are from. You just want to see yeah. the best team. You know, Castleford, just because Castleford have got a naff ground, why shouldn't they be in Super League? Because they'd be the best team. If they can be the best team on the pitch, then they should be as high as they possibly get. Same with Wakefield. You know, that's what it should be about. If and and Toronto, to be fair. You've got to give Toronto massive credit for going in League One and working their way up. And no one, no one can complain about Toronto being in mm. the Super League because they've done what any other team, you know, if Manchester wanted to, Manchester Rangers wanted to come in or whatever, Manchester Lions, whoever, they've done, they've done everything asked of them and they've got to Super League. Yeah, no, I agree, I agree, and uh, they, they deserve the shot in Super League. They, they have done very well over the. The last couple of years, uh, and let's face it, they've been going with three years, and to get ten thousand in in that Lamport Stadium is is some doing, especially when you consider all the other yeah, sporting teams sports, in Toronto. Yeah. Um, so that's right. And, and look at the, the Super League semi final between Wigan and Salford, nine thousand there last week, mm. and um, obviously it was a, it was a poor attendance from Wigan, good attendance from Salford at the D D W Stadium, but. You've got two teams there playing for a spot in the Super League Grand Final, attracting a crowd of nine and a half thousand, 
and you've got championship grand final between Toronto and Featherstone with obviously a couple, couple of hundred Featherstone fans who went along uh, so fair play to them but the majority of them uh, Toronto uh, fans uh, it, it's incredible I think, I think in some ways it, it almost highlights why it needs shaking up a bit because Wigan and, and Warrington I thought Warrington's attendance at the yeah. Challenge Cup final was poor yeah. and I think it maybe shows that because Warrington and Wigan and whoever else they're so used to getting into these big finals that they're just not turning up for semi-finals yeah. and it's like actually if teams can come in and shake it up and stop them teams getting there then all of a sudden well it might be years between them getting to these finals which then might drive attendances to the semis again right we've got a couple of comments coming through which we should probably um go through uh, leo says uh, toronto has said that they will keep 90 percent of the squad um with that in mind do you think they will be competitive in super league and stay up we mentioned this at the start of the show Leo. I don't think they'll keep ninety percent of the squad. I think it'll be probably seventy to eighty percent. They'll they'll keep. I think I think we'll see a, about five new faces, maybe six new faces uh, at the Wolfpack in twenty twenty. And obviously they, they've got a couple of players already leaving the club uh, and contracts expiring. I think they'll stay up. I don't think they'll have any any issue with uh, staying up. Um, who, do think, who do you think will go down? Uh, I think he'll go down. I think Uddersfield will struggle next year. Um, Leeds? No, I, I think I think Leeds will start to climb again. Uh, I don't think they. I don't think. I mean, the I mean if, War- if Warrington carry on the form from this season, they might be in trouble. Yeah, but but I'm, right right now, I probably I probably tip Uddersfield if I if I had to choose one, but they might change in the in the coming weeks. Uh, Lee says the formula. They have as failed before for Salford, uh, which is his team, uh, Lee, etc. All the Super League players, journeyman type um, mm. players. Well, you say I, that, I but you say that. Yeah, fair. you say that because the likes of O'Brien and Russell, they're not journeyman players as such. They're still, you know, O'Brien, for instance, mm. is still a hungry player yeah, to establish I'm himself. Latelli and Stanley exactly. have both got a bit. Wilkin. You know. You know Solid, solid player. Yeah, well, yeah, for, for solid, yeah. And I like, and, and, and Ol- like Olberson's a decent player yeah, as well. I'd, I'd like to see um, Akers in Super League. He's been, he's been good in the championship. Do you think, do you think they'd need to get another hooker? Because you, yeah. Bob Bezik, obviously, he's coming towards the end of his. Uh, will, will they have a look at Lunt? Maybe you know, Lunt's leaving Leeds. Did, did we hear a little whisper that Bezik to Newcastle? For next year. Yeah, but maybe that's Something not going to happen. Like with Who knows? Not going up. But uh, but I think we'll see around about five new players at Toronto, five good players as well. Uh, we could see a couple coming over from um, rugby union as well. Mm. Uh, Johnny Wright says Brian McDermott is talking absolute uh, poo, shall we say? <laughs> rugby league was built in these small northern towns. Won it in the grand final this weekend, and it is a rugby league powerhouse. Uh, looking forward to the big city team getting taught a lesson by these little <laughs> northern towns next season. Well, I mean, it's an interesting point, and I've said this. Someone asked the question, what have Toronto done that the other clubs can replicate? And obviously, you know, you can you, know, you can put the beer gardens behind the goal and all that sort of stuff. But ultimately, Toronto have been winning every week. Mm. If you, like, look at Salford. Salford have won a few, like, have done well this season. They've got, obviously, they've got to the grand final. But Salford took more fans to Wigan than they get in oh. any home games. And it's like, that's the thing with Toronto. They've not, apart from the million pound game defeat, that's the only bit of adversity they've had. Where you compare that to other teams who may have lost in finals, lost in semi-finals, been relegated, been in administration, had their best players sold. They've not faced that adversity. You know, they win every week. If you, if Huddersfield won every week, I'm sure they'd probably start getting yeah. a few more fans through. Um, so yeah, it will be interesting to see how they respond to maybe getting beat a few times. Yeah, but, but North American sport is completely different to English yeah. sport um, because I, I think they'd still keep turning up even if they were, they were bottom of the league. I think. No, because clearly it's about the whole exactly. experience. But, but whereas over here, you, you'd have fans falling off, you'd have fans ripping the season tickets up, in the, in the, especially considering, look at um, Witness a couple of years ago when they were in yeah. Super League, the, the season they were relegated. Um, how many games did they win? Was it four? Three. three. Yeah, three. Um, and, and you saw that attendances rapidly um, decline. But I, I don't think that would happen in uh, North American sport. A couple more comments. Lewis says, uh, Toronto is going to make or break the Super League. It could, bring, could be a springboard to being a global game. 
or end up being back as a 962 all the game. I don't think it's make or break. Uh, I think it could be make it'd or break. It'd be interesting to see what happens if Toronto finish bottom next season. <laughs> I think it could be make or break for uh, Toronto, Toronto yeah. um, as a club bot. Not, uh, not rugby league, I think that's uh, a little bit too far. Jason Pilmore, top fan is Jason Pilmore. Uh, Toronto have done everything asked of them without a salary cap roll on the big teams. Morning about travelling to Toronto and the show to turn around. We, 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 we do. We, we, there are quite a few clubs and there who, who mourn about a short turn. Yeah, oh yeah, geez. Well, I mean, the other thing, the other point about fans is Toronto will play all their games at the same time every week. Obviously, they won't have to be moved for a Thursday night. They won't have to be moved for a Friday night, and that's another benefit. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm of the opinion I'd be like if I was Wakefield, I'd be like, well, we'll just send. A, a dud team to Toronto or even not go at all save the money take the 30 nil forfeit and just play next week because it's going to cost Wakefield a wedge of money to go over there probably get beat anyway and then potentially the week after having to back it up and play somebody else now there was a little, I know someone posted this I think it was on one of our pages the other day a suggestion that they should have increased Super League to 13 teams and then what you could do is give a bye to the team who played Toronto away the following week. So say say Castleford were playing Toronto on the Saturday night, the following week, Castleford would have a week off for their bye week. And oh, then they, right. Do you know what I mean? And obviously you could do that with 13 teams. Uh, I've got a bit of a... I've not got OCD in me, James, but I like it being even. So it's <laughs> either 12 or 14. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 um, or 13. Well, we're gonna, um, no, no. Sorry, we've got a couple more comments on Toronto. Mike Malloy, St. Helens fan. Uh, says, can you see Toronto winning the Super League no. this season? I, I, close. I think I think that would be a no. drastic, drastic uh, change. I, I think I think they'll struggle to make the top five. I'm honest. I probably. You'd well, imagine it, they're going to win most of their own it, games. It, it depends on who they sign, obviously. Um, but if you base that off this current squad, I don't I don't think they make the uh, top five. But like like you just mentioned, James, it all depends on the the home advantage and how that works because. They might start the season and they might only win one out of mm. seven or, yeah. or two. And, and to be fair, they have struggled a little bit mm. in the championship. Not maybe not so much this season, but certainly last season they had a lot of very close games that maybe if they're in Super League they would lose them games rather than winning that and I remember they, they beat Rochdale twenty two nineteen, I think, and it's like they might be the games that when yeah. they're in Super League they might lose. Uh Louis also says being a Warrington fan. The amount of finals we've made in the last 10 years has cost a huge amount of money going to watch them compared to the previous 10 years. Uh, it does have an impact on the number of fans going. We were speaking about, I, th- we, I think we spoke about this on a, on a couple of shows, James, especially around the time of the Challenge Cup final at Wembley. It's an expensive trip, isn't it, for a yeah, fan? Yeah. Especially, especially if you're, obviously you're a parent, if you're going if you're a parent year, yeah. and you're taking a, a kid or a couple of kids um, and that because you, you're not just paying for the match ticket, you, yeah. you have to pay for the corks travel. Then food. you have to pay for the food, like nine pound for a burger or something in Wembley. It's it it it's it's, it's about about hundred pound per person, isn't it? Yeah. What what you're paying it so, all together in it. Let's um, really we're going to talk about Super League on final in a second. Let's just run through some bits of news. Rochdale relegated from Championship. have got no directors after their board resigned. Kevin Leroya, French former French international, signed a new deal at Halifax. Oldham have appointed former Leeds and Bradford hooker Matt Diskin as head coach. Diskin was at Batley um, up until this season. Matty Marsh has signed a new deal at York. York made a few good signs, haven't they? They've uh, looking good, aren't they? James Green, Chris Clarkson, Danny Washbrook. Yeah, um, a couple of good signings, and, and they're looking strong. It, it looks as though they, they will have a, a strong pack next year. Jack Teambury. Uh, team B, sorry, uh, yeah. he's impressed me this year. Sean Lund sure. has confirmed he won't be at Leeds next season. He, he moved as part. He moved from be, OK as part of the deal with Matt Parcell, didn't he? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to, because obviously we we've not heard much about what Matt Parcell's doing for for next year. I think year. he said he's stopping. Yeah, I think he said he's stopping. Is he stopping on it? OK. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see where Lund ends up. Do you reckon mm. it dropped right into the championship? Could he go to Toronto? You know what I mean? Well, that's what I said, yeah. Well, uh, uh, Keith Lee have signed Jake Webster from Bradford. Bradford having all sorts of dramas as usual. I uh, believe uh, Bradford are going to be taking over this week at some point. Tony Gijo, Catalan full back out of contract. Catalan have confirmed he's leaving. Um, he's being linked with a uh, switch to rugby union to play for too long. Um, Chris Kendall, we'll go about that in a bit. Chris Kendall's referee in the grand final. Um, Sam Burgess 
is out of the Great Britain tour, as is Callum Watkins and Stevie Ward, who shouldn't be picked anyway. Um, Super League have confirmed Magic Weekend. Let's talk about this for a uh, quickly before we go well, on to the next final. Callum Watkins playing for Jamaica in the 2021 World Cup, yeah. Well, I mean, he'd have to. He's going to have to improve dramatically to get in the England team for the World Cup. You would imagine. I know that. You're not having a centre on based if it's based on current form over Gildar, Connor, Personal. Percival, Bateman. Mm. Right, Magic Weekend back to Newcastle. Um, I'm not too sure about this. I, I, I don't. I didn't like it at Anfield particularly, but I just sort of feel like it's a bit of a backward step going back to Newcastle. So do I. I get sick of the Magic Weekend talk to be fair because I'm just tired of it now. I think it's I think it's just an event that's run its course. Yeah, it needs uh, to be in binned. my opinion, it needs to be bin. We uh, we do say it quite often, don't we? We talk about the structures and and the amount of games we have in a season. Um, I didn't go to Liverpool. Or, um, I was <laughs> I was actually on. Uh, it was all holiday. right. I was on holiday it last right. this year. I picked Las Vegas over Anfield. Uh, you can't blame me. Um, <laughs> but I just think Magic Weekend it's just become a bit tiresome yeah. for fans for players for everyone involved I think um, going back to Newcastle yeah it might it might put the attendances back up a little bit but who are we actually growing the game are we actually growing the game no, I, I, I just think we're, we're just taking and one, I just, it, one it one always looks naff doesn't it it always looks naff because because of the because of the format of it there's always going to be scheduled empty seats and it just looks naff yeah um, and I'd ra- you'd rather see Toronto versus St. Helens, a yeah. one-off game at Newcastle, say, yeah. or at a big, like Catalan Wigan, you know, at New Camp. You'd rather see a one-off game packed, looks miles better than Magic Weekend. Right. It was all right, New Camp, wasn't it? It was. Right, we're going to go on to Grand Final. We've got loads of stuff building up to the Super League Grand Final. St. Helens against Salford, Old Trafford, Saturday night. Drew, you're on duty for Love Rugby League. Um, great story for Salford to get there. Bre- story. It's breathed life into it, I must admit. Um, I think if it had been Saints Wigan, I think it would have been our same old, you know, Saints heavy favourites. I think if Saints, it, 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 it I, I think I, I said, I think I said this last week. If Salford go to the final and lose to Saints, I think everyone's happy. In, you know, obviously, yeah, okay, Salford want to win it, and, and I'm sure they'll give it a good go. But if St. Helens win, they've been the best team, but then we've still had the great story of Salford getting to Old Trafford and, and playing. And, and don't get me wrong, Salford could win the yeah. game. You know, there's it's, no doubt about that. Oh, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the game. I'm, I've, I've not been looking forward to a grand final like this, I don't think, in a, in a couple of years anyway. I think it might have been 2016, the last one I was really had a buzz about. And, and this is fantastic. There's so many good stories. Uh, to be told about in, in both teams as well um, about this um, grand final. I think so for getting to the grand final has kind of helped Justin Holbrook and St. Helens a little bit because not a lot of talk has been mm-hmm. on them. Ever, all, ever, all the media, all the fans are foc- focusing on Salford and all the other neutral fans are backing Salford uh, to do the job at Old Trafford. Um, and it's actually took the shine off Justin Holbrook's last game for St. Helens. Um, well, yeah, like, but he's quite like I say they're quite happy because the, otherwise there would have been a lot of pressure exactly, on them. Oh, exactly, especially after exactly. Bellingham. And I think St. Helens will be very, very glad. But if, if you cast your mind back to last year when it was Sean Wynn's last game as Wigan coach, I know there's a bit more of, a, of an emotional yeah, you'd, you'd imagine Sean Wynn at Wigan, but if Saints had that been, was massive for Wigan last year. If Saints had been playing Wigan, it'd have been all about yeah. Saints. You know, it'd have been all about all the, the presses on hold. Uh, but Wigan are yeah. gonna, you know, Wigan are gonna um, ruin the party but, or whatever. But I, but I think St. Helens will welcome the fact that Salford have got there. Um, Oh, there's so many good stories in that Salford team. Chris Naninu, um released it, it was it in February uh, after Witness went into administration, mm-hmm. was without a club, was playing Championship Rugby. Uh, no disrespect to the Championship, but obviously got his move to Super League with uh, Salford. Uh, I think he's been nicknamed the Iceman uh, when kicking uh, the goals as well at the Red Devils, sponsored by Telecom Solutions <laughs> this season. Um, and Gil Dudson, Gil Dudson, he couldn't, he could hardly get on the field, could he? What in his last couple of years at Witness, uh, due to due to um, injury, and then he's he's become one of the best props in the competition this year. Now there's there's loads of stuff on the side. We've had a couple of video, we've got a couple of video interviews. One with um, Salford Chief Executive Ian Blees, who 
says it's a shame because obviously after the grand final a lot of their team is going to move away obviously Jackson Hastings is off to Wigan Bibby's off to Wigan Josh Jones is going to Hull George Griffin and Devil Alford are going to Castleford we expect another couple to leave Logan Tompkins is going um, but Bleas was sort of saying that they're used to rebuilding now he's already pretty much got it done for next season already they've signed Kevin Brown Dan Sargison Chris Atkin Paulie Paulie Jack Ormanroy James Greenwood Connor Jones it is a shame, though, isn't it, that this team, you know, imagine if Salford win, well, I suppose, depending on whether they win or lose, I suppose it would be a shame if they lose because they then can't do it again next year and try yeah. and go one better. And then, likewise, it would be a shame if they win anyway because it's like, well, you can't keep a dynasty together. I know, I know what you're saying, um, James, but it happens in every sport that the smaller teams always get the best players cherry-picked by, by the bigger clubs. And that's just the way it goes because the bigger clubs can afford to offer... Uh, those players more money. I've spoken to Ian Watson uh, a couple of times in recent weeks, and he he said the same thing. He, so for uh, being the club they are and being the size they are, they can't help um, they can't help the current situation because they've not got uh, unlimited resource in the back room. I think I think he said it. So for have only got six back room staff at the club. The, I mean, the point that he was making is that they're hoping staggering. that the grand final run will will prove to be a catalyst to getting more commercial support, to getting more fans in. Because ultimately, well, if you can get an extra five hundred fans through the gates, then obviously you can sign better players. Exactly, exactly. Um, and the, the, I think the business for next year is pretty smart anyway. Uh, if I'm honest, James, I think Connor Jones could be. Could be one of the shrewdest signings of 2020. He's been phenomenal for Featherstone in the Championship. Uh, Kevin Brown's a bit of a... Jack, Jackson Hastings leaving the club. You're not going to replace Jackson Hastings. It was a risk bringing him over here, but it was, it was a risk which certainly paid off. Um, but, well, I mean, that's the thing. You've you got know, when you're when you're at that level, you've got to find a, head, a gem, yeah. haven't you? You've got to take a gamble on someone. Joey Lutzik, another, yeah. another another brilliant find uh, from Ian Watson. I actually, spoke to Ian Watson about um, the the bromance between Jackson Hastings and, and Joey Lutzik. He, he finds that uh, Jackson Hastings wouldn't be as good as what he has been if it wasn't for for Lutzik. Obviously, Lutzik and Hastings uh, lived together in the same house, and and uh, Jackson Hastings was telling me the other day that. Plus it does all the cooking, all the cleaning, so that means that Aces can, can just put his, put his feet up when he gets in from training. Do you think Lussick will end up at Wigan eventually? Uh, hey, who knows, but don't go starting rumours, James. Hey, don't go starting rumours um, a couple of days before the grand final. The, um, I mean, obviously, there are, obviously Kevin Brown's coming in, he's had, you know, he's sat out virtually all of this year injured. Um, they've got Chris Atkin as well, which uh, I think Atkin's a good player. You know, can Atkin play with Lola here? Um, a bit of a, a, a weird, a, a bit of a dynamic to work out there. Um, Phil Clark, who's took a bit of stick off Salford fans, he reckons that this is the most remarkable story of his lifetime in rugby league terms. Well, I'm, I'm I mean, obviously, I'm being, being, a, being a Wiganer, he's got to ignore Sheffield beating Wigan in Challenge Cup final, which well, is yeah. which is undoubtedly the biggest story yeah. of his lifetime. Well, it's, well, it's probably of the Super League. Uh, it's probably, in Super League. probably the biggest story of the Super League era, uh, or in in Super League. Um, I think it's it's kind of a similar story to if, if they do beat St Helens, it should be up there with Leicester City no. in the Premier League. Really? Should, Le Leicester, uh, about where they were at the time, had far more money than what. So yeah, but everything's relative though, isn't it? And, they, and don't forget, Leicester had to do it over thirty-eight games and be top after thirty-eight games, whereas. It's With Salford, yeah, okay, Salford finished third, but then they win a couple of games in playoffs and, and they're there. Let, let's face it though, Leicester, Leicester weren't a tip. Weren't a, they were tipped for relegation though, they were tipped for relegation that season. I think the thing with the league is you, to win a league is far more of a significant achievement than to win the playoffs. Don't forget, Salford have lost in this playoff series. You know, Salford have they've, they've played three playoffs games and lost one. But well, that's not how it works in rugby league. And, and I, I understand that. But what I'm saying is, I d don't 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 get me wrong. I'm not taking away from Salford, but I don't think it's up there with Leicester City. I think it is. Um, we've got we've got a couple of comments to go on, through. Yeah, um, go Jason say, oh Ian says first of all, will Toronto have to run under the same salary cap rules as the rest of Super League next yes. year? Yes, they, they were. were. They were running under the salary cap. Yeah, same yeah, salary cap rules yeah, yeah, this year. They have been doing it, and even though, even though Toronto spend. Uh, a lot more than the other team in the championship. It's their money, so they can yeah. do what they want. With it, it. I mean, the championship salary cap should be reduced. Um, that, that is that, but well, that's a separate issue. Ricky Latelli on four hundred grand a year. 
Uh, I'd like to compare that with the, the whole I'd like to be a quid behind him. I'd team. like to be a quid behind him. Yeah. Well, I mean, half the Feverson team are paid by Leeds anyway, so... <laughs> I don't get into that, James. Jason Pilmore says, York will be a team to watch in the Championship next year as a Fev fan. I think they will challenge us and leave for the top three. I, I, I'd probably agree with you. So and Mo- and so London to lose as well. To lose this... To- Definitely not. Uh, no, I'm only, I'm only joking with this. I'm available. I can lace my boots on. You know. uh, Luke, Luke, uh, Glenn says, why in Britain people don't like bank holidays for games in North America? We love holiday games. I'm guessing Glenn's Canadian. We do like bank holiday games. Is Glenn the winner of the Fantasy League? We've had someone from Canada. Glenn who, Rickson? Someone from Canada finished third in the Fantasy Rugby this year. We had to post his prize out this week. It cost me 20 notes. Oh, it's not like you to be spending money, James. Uh-huh. Louis yeah. says... Uh, bum, uh, Luby says, bum magic weekend, and you will see the tendencies go back up for the Challenge Cup final. Exactly what I've been saying, Louis. You, well, I mean, the other, the, other point the, is, the, other, the other point is, don't forget, the, the Challenge Cup final is going to be a lot closer to magic weekend yeah. next season because they're bringing the, the Cup final forward. Scrap it, and the players have, have a week. Uh, well, sc- <sighs> international week. Yeah, you could have it into the international week. Or you, or you could just have one game at Easter and then play the, the other Easter fixture. Uh, in the Magic Weekend block. Uh, Glenn also says, you, you guys need to stream on YouTube, you might get more viewers. Limited resource, Glenn. You're well, we stream on Facebook. We've got, more, we've got more followers on Facebook than YouTube. Um, uh, Mike Malloy says, Fano, just one more uh, comment, James. Bring the World, World Cup game to this side of the season so departing players can play in it. The likes of Hastings should Salford, Salford win <laughs> the grand <laughs> final. Uh, won't be involved even though they've earned the right The problem to... you've got with that is that it becomes the pin... I think the worry is is they don't want the World Cup yeah. game to be the pinnacle. They want the Super League game to be the pinnacle. And then also you've got the internationals and all that palaver. And then, um, then it's it's a, it's a strange one, the World Cup challenge for I me. Do because, because, I do agree with this I do agree with Because next point. year, well, every, every season when it takes place, it takes place around two weeks into the Super League season and the NRL season mm. hasn't even started. So some of the NRL clubs are treating it like a trial game, yeah. like a pre-season game, whereas the Super League clubs are already got got bruised bodies in effect yeah, because the Super League season's already started. It's, it's, it's I, And don't get me wrong, I love the World Club Challenge game. Oh, Glenn says no, I don't think he's won the cup. <laughs> um, I don't think... Like, I love the World Cup Challenge game. I, I grew up you, watching the World Cup Challenge. I, I think I've watched near, near enough every single one since it was. Do you think? Do you think they could up. change it a little bit and say, say like, so like Sydney Roosters won. It, it, instead of like, obviously, yeah, you want it to be a big game, but but acknowledging that it is a trial game for the NRL, why don't they say to Sydney Roosters, right, you come over, play three games over here, play, I don't know. And do a tour. Yeah, and do like a, a tour where they play maybe you know they could come over and play I don't know. Warren, no, maybe not a Super League team, maybe a Super League select team or a Championship select team or, you know, or Cumbria or something and play a couple of games and then build it up so that they have almost like their trial games leading up to a World Cup Challenge. Possibly. Um, yeah. or, or you could take them far and wide, you could play Toronto, Toulouse, Catalan. Well, I mean, I mean, could you not make the argument that they could play France, you know, and, you know, and they could play France or they could play Wales or something and do that and, you know, they come over and play... Sydney Roosters play France. Jamaica. Uh, well, yeah. Um, anyway. Um, we mentioned this before, and it's a disgrace. The Bookies. William Hill. The Bookies always win. Always always bet with Betfred, not William Hill, because William Hill are refusing to pay out on a on a bet. A Salford fan made this week. Um, Jackson Hastings, Man of Steel, Salford top five. So not even Salford grand final. I mean, he'd have been a millionaire if he'd have predicted that. He got 25 to 1 on Jackson Hastings, 8 to 1 on Salford Top 5, so what's that? At least, I don't know, at least 200 to 1, isn't it, that? At least oh, 200 yeah, to 1. Well, so, that. 100 quid is put on, and he would have been due to win £23,400. So, what, what it was, two, two pals put... 50 quid each, yeah. 50 quid each in. Uh, they assumed it was a, a double bet. So it does say double on the betting system. Yeah, so, so, they, so they thought... That was right. They thought it was an accumulator, so you had two bets in one. Um, but now William Hill, the bookmaker, is saying it was, a human it, was, error. it was a human error and it was two single bets. So it's not a double, so it doesn't rack up the amount it does. I've see, I seen, really I seen a really good tweet about this, and I'm, I'm annoyed that I've not got it in front of me because it was something about how many... Um, 
how many, how much profit William Hill made this year, and it's a ridiculous amount. And it's like, for these two lads from Salford, you know, working class lads, they've, they've put a bit of money on, it's come in, you know, they wouldn't have got the 100 quid back if they'd have lost. Well, hopefully, cause, because I've done this article now, James, hopefully William Hill will pay up and these, these lads will, will treat me to a couple of pints. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping, James. Well, I mean, they'd owe a lot of people pints because it's been in loads of different papers. <laughs> well, hey, they'll have 23 grand. For, so, so maybe put that 400 aside and we'll all have a... We could all have a celebration on Saturday. We could get a new, we could get a new studio. JJ Bell. We could get a new studio. Um, here's another really interesting story that you did this week. Josh Jones, the Salford forward, he's getting married on Sunday. Mm. Big weekend. So, yeah, and but uh, the thing is though, is if they win, he's not going to be able to go out on the lash, is he? No, no. He said uh, he's only going to have a couple of pints in in his home in Wigan. I'm not sure uh, about that. On Saturday, if they win, oh, I know you, you get in trouble, wouldn't you, with, with the missus if, if, he, if he turn up absolutely steaming on the Sunday. Um, but yeah, it's hectic 24 hours and no, very, very nerve wracking 24 hours as well. Um, former Salford owner Marwan Kukash, media hungry, obviously, he cropped up this week, of course he has. Um, Salford, not trying to take credit as such, but saying that he started the journey. He's saying that he's definitely going to be coming back to Rugby League. Um, he's not sure when or with whom, but he doesn't want to be used as a meal ticket. He doesn't want to be used to get somebody out of jail. Obviously, there was this talk about Liverpool um, a while ago that's quieted down a little bit. He's talked before about a Cumbrian team. He's talked before about Bradford. He was around Widnes from Widnes administration. He also, and I forgot about this, he also wanted to put a British team in the NRL, the British Bulldogs. Hey, playing at Spurs' new ground, British Bulldogs against Canberra Raiders. Drew Darby should have lose forward. What is that for the reserves? Oh, for the first team. Um, Kukash, um, I mean, is he all, is, <laughs> is Kukash just, is that just what he is? He's just full of hot air and... No, I think his intentions are, are right. Um, and fair, play to, fair play to him for saying he's not just going to buy any club and get people into jail because he could yeah. easily go and, go and take over Bradford but then be in debt for a couple of million um, and have, have, have to pay that off. Um, so I think, he, I think he is intending to, to come back into the sport, to be honest. Uh, yeah, so, but he, he, he seems, yeah, gen he has, he he seems genuine. Right time, yeah, he it? seems genuine. The it, Liverpool thing, I'd, lo I'd love to see a Liverpool thing happen because I do think that you know, we talk about expansion and we talk about this. The reality is, is that there's two massive cities right in the M62 corridor that don't touch rugby league at all. I mean, there's, there's little bits of rugby league, but Liverpool and Manchester, if you could get that right. And I also think there's a bit of an opportunity in Liverpool because, the, you know, there's non-league teams. There's not much non-league football there or there's non-league teams who need grounds. And you could build a stadium, have a non-league football team there, get a rugby league team in it and actually do pretty well. Um so hopefully yeah, he comes back with um, with Liverpool, with a Liverpool team. That's what I'd like to see anyway. No, I don't, I don't think another another club is going to do much, James, I'm honest. But uh, Swinton are looking for uh, owners. Yeah, but he's going to... Well, unless, unless he went into Swinton and just said, sod the fans, I'm changing it to Manchester anyway. Because don't forget... Yeah, he could do that because, you know... You know, it's How are you, Dave? Dave Parkinson's listening. Hey. We've got an idea for Dave. We need to get him back in. We need to get Dave back in here because we've got a few video ideas we want to do with uh, Dave. Hashtag bring back Parky. Yeah, get that trendy. Um, but but uh, we've got a couple more comments. Mike Guru says if people start going to Willie Mill, then it's going to cost them in the long run. Always bet with Betfred, as long as we're sponsored by Betfred for that. For the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Louis also says twenty three grand to Willie Mill is nothing. The publicity from paying up on this bag dream better loan would have been worth it for them. That, that's what you I, hinted at on a tweet. Yeah, well, I wondered whether they were like, were they being clever and maybe just because obviously they're getting loads of press. I mean, yeah, it's bad press, but they do say that. What's the saying? All good public, all publicity is good publicity, yeah. and but it's like. It? And everyone's talking about William Hill when it leads up to Betfred, when it's leading up to a Betfred Grand Final. I don't think Rebecca Vardy will agree with you on that one, James. Oh, let's not, let's not get into oh, that. Um, right, St. Helens, Salford, then, predictions. I've got to go with Saints. 
they've been unbelievable all year. They've, they've won the Super League lead, leader's shield by 16 points, uh, a record in the Super League era. I think it was last done by Wigan in 86 or 87, and that was by 15 points, so, so Saints have broken that record. They've got good players all over the park here. I, I probably agree with Jackson Hastings. Johnny Lomax has been one of the best players, if not the best, alongside Hastings in what? Super League this year. It just makes sense to take. Um, Lachlan Coote at the back, phenomenal player. In fact, Saints' entire back line is unbelievable. Well, Saints team. Um, so go on, Saints by how many? I'll go Saints by... 14. 14, man of the match. And... Johnny Lomax for the Hansen what, Trophy. Uh, Jackson, uh, Johnny Lomax has basically said that Jackson Hastings has been playing mind games by saying Lomax is the best player in Super League. Mm. What, what do you think about that? Is that Lomax playing mind games? <laughs> I don't know, is, 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 is he's playing the mind games. Is it, <laughs> is it Johnny Lomax trying to pour uh, water and cool, cool the situation? or? Because uh... Hastings said it, didn't he? Was it after, wasn't it after the Wigan game? I think it might be a little bit of both, to be honest. I think Aston's could, could possibly know what he's doing um, by saying that um, can't, could, because it kind of puts the pressure on to, to Lomax, doesn't it? From Hastings, who's won the Man of Steel. Um, but it also, at the same time, it, it's quite a humbling comment from Jackson Hastings, isn't it? To, mm. For him to vote one of his peers uh, as, as the, the best player in the league. Uh, I think I think I think there could be some mind games. I think there could be some mind games in, in Lomax's comments back at uh, Aston's as well. So um, yeah, I, 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 but I, I like seeing stuff like this instead of the usual. Press, that, um, grand finals are, are, are typically lower scoring than a normal game, partly because the in goals are tiny. I always think so. You don't really see many tries off kicks. Um, Everyone get your comments and your predictions. So for all Saints. Um, I I think Saints. I think a lot depends. I think if Saints get on a roll early, I think they could blow Salford away. But I think Salford's defence has been so good the last few weeks. If Salford can maintain that, yeah. um, you know, and really stay in the arm wrestle for as long as possible. Um, a bit like Featherston did last week. You know, Featherston got to, what, 50 minutes and it was 6-4. Um, you know, yeah, they lost 24-6 in the end, but... Um, if we can see a competitive game, that'd be great. Uh, Dave says Saints by twelve. Mike Root says Saints by twenty. Mm. And uh, Dave also says what off for Prime Minister. And uh, Jackson thought... Hastings will have to discard it's Johnny Lomax PJs when he goes to Wigan. <laughs> yeah, Colleen Rooney's going for Prime Minister, I think. Um, oh, oh, are they? Don't forget as well tomorrow night, Super Women's Super League Grand Final at St Helens, Leeds against Castleford. All the Yorkies have been moaning because they have to come over here to watch it, which is just typical rugby league. Um, saw a Yorkshire Post article bemoaning it. Why is it in St Helens? Why is it not in Yorkshire? And it's like, well, it's like an hour and a half up the road, lads. Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't Leeds v Cass Ground final 2017 in uh, Manchester no. Old Trafford? Yeah, and it's just like... And that's the trouble then, didn't it? You know, we talk about expansion, there's six Yorkshire teams and... The Women's Super League is doing well. They got St. Helens. Don't forget, it's only in St. Helens because they moved the date to be on TV and Headingley was unavailable. So if it had been Saints Wigan in the grand final, they wouldn't have been moaning that it was at Headingley. They'd just gone with it. So, um, But yeah, good to see the women's game on Sky. Chris Lee says Saints by 18. Mike says Saints 24. Salford 8. Yeah. Yeah. I think there'll be a couple of tries in it. Uh, I because Saints are just too powerful, but I just hope it's a good game and at full time uh, whistle we can we can be proud of what of we've just game. seen and, and we can say what a great habit it is for be, Super League and for Rugby League. Before we go, you went to the Man of Steel Awards dinner yeah, I did. thing. Was yeah. it, did they do food? Was the food? They, did, they did food, but I didn't stay for it, James. They, they did the awards first and, and uh, um, I, I shot off after, after that. How late was the food? Well, the, the awards started at 7. So they presented all the awards first because it was streamed on our league, wasn't it? And mm. then they did the meal afterwards at about half nine. Right. right. But I, I'm, up, I'm up, up early on a Monday morning. So I didn't stay Jackson Hastings, um, Jackson Hastings, Man of Steel, obviously there was no real debate with that one. Um, Matty Lee's got young, young player. player. We I voted for Morgan Smithies, but Lee's was my second choice. Um, yeah, I, I've... I've and we've got to remember, and I think it's important to remember that the uh, 
the voting for the coach of the year and the vote, voting for the for the young player of the year as well, they were made in August. So, but they, I, they but that, the, I understand what you said about the coach, and I know people are going to say this about Ian Watson, but I just thought Holbrook has finished top by 16 points. Yeah, okay, Watson's done a good job with Salford and they finished third and they overachieved and. You know, but the reality is, is Sol Saints won nine more games than Salford. And yeah, Saints have got a great team. But Holbrook's built that team. They've still got to win every week. You know, look at Warrington. Warrington have got all that money, but they didn't finish 16 points clear. I just think, I can understand both arguments, but I think it's a bit unfair to say Holbrook didn't deserve it. No, I won't say Holbrook didn't deserve it, but I thought Watson deserved it more, in my opinion, just because of the limited resource uh, he's had. He's got he's got six people on his backroom staff. Um, he's so Salford's money compared to anyone else in Super League, not Saints. Compared to anyone else in Super League. But having said that, the they all get the handouts from Sky, so in theory they should all be able to match the salary cap. Just 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 throwing it out there. But yeah, uh, I think we'll we'll disagree on that one. Uh, Dave says fancy Leeds to beat Cass in the Women's Super League Grand Final. Another but another close game. Le Leeds, Leeds, of course, beat Cass in the uh, Challenge Cup final. Leeds oh. lost. I think Leeds lost in the Grand Final last year to Wigan. Um, so they'll be looking to uh, to get one up there. Uh, it's, uh, Dave says Courtney Hill was outstanding last week against Saints. Obviously, the the woman of steel uh, for twenty nineteen, but. Could she uh, be hanging her boots up and uh, crossing? She's been moaning about cricket. money, hasn't she? I've seen that. She's been moaning about money. She's on about switching to cricket because she's not getting enough money. But ultimately, if, if the, the sponsors and the revenue is not there, then what is, it, is the game is the women's game big enough to, to get paid yet? No, I mean it's growing, but I mean it's yeah, growing, I think, I think you've got to be realistic. You, you know, until until you've got a, a money deal where TV are paying and you've got sponsors paying and you've got thousands of people mm. watching you're not going to get paid yeah uh glenn says the women's super league um grand final should be played in the same place as the men's yeah i probably agree yeah, i, I think i've said that before i think it should just be i, I, to I don't know how much that is to do with they like to do all this mucking around on the pitch before and don't they with yeah. flags and fireworks and and stuff um I actually don't think the a few years ago they had it in manchester didn't they where they had it in the at man city's ground at the regional arena and then well, they've also come it's Championship and League One Women's Finals over at Manchester Regional Arena, 11.30 and 1.30 on Saturday. So mm. uh, if you're free all day, possibly go over to that one before you head down to Old Trafford. Uh, I think we're, we're, we're getting a few more comments in as we're trying to wrap up here, James. Uh, Mike Rue says, how many do all the teams have in the back room? Um, I'm not entirely sure, but a lot more than, than six. It's like, And I mean, what Ian Watson has... Maybe I'm. Um, He's got Paul Rowley assistant, on him. Assistant coach in Ro Paul Rowley. Uh, a highly rated conditioner in Greg Brown. Uh, I think his name is. Uh, a couple of um, physio. physios and stuff like oh, yeah, that. Yeah, some of the teams have got analysts. Yeah. They've got well, some, nutritionists. Some, some teams in Super League have a media team of about eight. Um, but we won't mention who they are. Glenn also says he could make it. A bigger event, uh, I think it's on about the Women's Grand Final, and you could have a promotion with the tickets. If you buy the men's, you should get now, the tickets for the Now, the women. only issue I have, the only issue I have with the women's, the, the double header thing, is if if the Women's Grand Final is before the men's, do you get pockets of fans who then go after the Grand Final, which then means the men's Grand Final, mm. there's empty seat. Because we saw that with the Challenge Cup semi-finals, was... Casford must have brought a thousand, say, or a couple of thousand to watch the women's game. And obviously they disappeared after the women's game. So that meant there was, I mean, there was empty seats anyway. But obviously, if that was the Super League Grand Final and that's the pinnacle and that's the, the, end, the event that's the end of the season, what you don't want is you don't want fans coming in for the women's game and then leaving. And you, yeah. you've always got that risk with a double edit. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think we're, we're wrapping up for, that's, for this week, Jay. Yeah, that's <laughs> it for this week. Drew's panicking because he wants to go home. Um, thanks to Betfred. I'm here for another. Oh, thanks, thanks to Betfred for their uh, thanks to Betfred for their ongoing support and sponsor of the podcast. Please do share, like, give us your comments if you've got any comments. If you're watching this on demand, it'll go up on Facebook, it'll go on YouTube, it'll go on the website. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.